fam. Welcome back to Love and Grit. I'm Laia. I'm Justin. I'm Rachel. As we deal with this unforeseen journey of uncertainty, Love and Grit will continue as we have been doing to bring you Philly stories of resilience, resolve, and yes, recreation. We are here for the fun. Speaking of recreation, should we do the outdoor spot that we can't wait to have a picnic at? Oh, that's fun. I like that. Laia, you're up. Okay, um, let's see, the outdoor spot that I'm looking forward to, Spruce Street Harbor. Yes, where I can swing for free, play in water for free, and drink for a little. <laughs> <laughs> I miss it. I miss laying down in a hammock and being able to lay there as long as I want to. And the sun beating on your face. Where are you looking forward to that, Rach? I am a huge fan of Fairmount Park. Where in Fairmount Park? It's it's the largest park in a city. Okay, so that's There's true. a lot of parts. <laughs> okay, okay, challenge accepted. Um, I love of the man. Um, that's where the Ritz picnic would take place. Please touch museum. So there's a lot of options for family entertainment, outdoor entertainment. So I'm going to throw it back at you. You're right. It is very large. So what do so, you love? So about mine's Fairmount in Park? Fairmount Park too. Okay. Okay. So there's a spot on Kelly Drive that has, it's a statue of three angels. They're like three pillars and the angels are on top. And it's sort of like midway Kelly Drive. Okay. And when I road when I was in high school, that was a part we'd have to run down and turn around to. And right now it's where all the cherry blossoms are looking beautiful. So it'll be nice to get back there and be able to hang around. Definitely. Now I miss riding my bike around Ben Frank. Dang, you right, Justin. We'll be there soon. We'll be That's there true. soon. That's true. That's true. Yeah. But right now it's time for Love and Grit. All right, so Charlie Mack, truly so many things to so many people. To some, he's the person who's launched their careers into stardom. To others, he is the unofficial mayor of Philly. To Will Smith, he is the best friend and the guy spinning him around and opening the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. But to most of us... I'm the big brother. And only your big brother will tell you that you can kick a verse, but don't cuss. That's your, yeah, that's your big brother. That's what I'm saying. That's what big brother's supposed to do. supposed to give you the best advice. So how have you been doing in these weird times? Uh, everything's good. Everything's good. I'm saying for me, people, oh, I'm bored. Oh, I'm... I said, whatever you think it is, that's what it is. 24 hours a day, whenever I start thinking about being in here, I channel my mind that came in 10 minutes ago. So for me, I live right in that moment, right there. Tell us that. how your career evolved. 1978, my uncle, his name is Matt Covington. He was a group called Philly Internationals, an R&B group back in the day. And he left the group. He wanted to start his own label called April Records. And essentially what I was doing was what we know today as street promotions going around uh, taking his singles and pretty much taking them to clubs, taking them to uh, record stores, wherever people was at gathering, I would actually take his record and promote it. That's, That's how people happened. started in the business. Well, my actual, actual start was 14. I did a house party in my mother's house and I had 250 kids. I wrote it out, Charlie Mack Productions. Once I got there, I got bit, I got bit by the bug. And I was like, this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. Charlie, for everybody who doesn't know, used to do these amazing celebrity weekends where he would bring the best of black Hollywood to Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And not only would they party, but they would serve and they would yeah, go absolutely. to the juvenile center and they would talk to the young guys. I lost two brothers to homicide. So when I moved back from California, my brother had passed away, and I was just in a space of, what can I do to help? So there was a group of mothers called Mothers in Charge. I go meet with them, and I'm like, okay, I can't be a Mothers in Charge, but I can be a brother in my hand. And so I had to think about what, how, what capacity, what could I do? I could bring Mars Chestnut here, right? And Mars Chestnut was in the Boys in the Hood. So let me have him come and talk to the kids. Then I said, I'll get Gabrielle Union come talk to the kids. I'll get Will come talk to the kids. So I just thought about how powerful these celebrities are. The kid won't listen to the mother and father, and they'll listen to Jay-Z. They yeah, listen to Will Smith. So, so I always bring people that want to serve because that's what we are. We're serving. So how do we serve in the midst and post this situation that we're going through? What do you see? Watch this. It's not even about you giving back to me because, again, I've made a pact with the creator. And I'm saying he put something on my life that I'm saying this is what I'm going to bestow this. I'm going to bestow this responsibility on your shoulders. And I humbly accept it. Responsibly, humbly accept it. And so whatever you do or whatever it is I do for you, that's on you. You don't owe me anything. We don't need to go to church. You're taking us there. Oh, no, no, no. I'm just your brother. That's all. That's it. I'm just your brother. But, but see, you see that feeling that you got? That's what your big brother's supposed to do for you. That's what your family member's supposed to do for you in terms of judgment day. I want my work to be complete up to the point that I'm saying he calls on me. You're going to make us look bad. That's what's going to happen when all the orders well, no, no, come not, up. You're going to be like, no, oh, here come Charlie. We're going to beat no, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not here to make you look bad. I'm here to set an example. I'm here to be the possibility. Thank you for so, doing you know, that. Really, again, big brother, right? Big brother's going to set the example. So I could be a clown, right? Or I could be, I could matter. So again, this, this, are you in the way or are you creating a way? Which one? Mm, I like that one. In the way or creating a way. Truth be told, 
for me, the glass is always full. I'm looking at it strictly on the page of, this is an amazing time for me to get all the things done that I have been procrastinating about. I can get them done now because my slate has been clean. There are no excuses at this point. Whatever you think it is what it is. Yeah. It's a blank canvas. Yeah. Yeah. You paint the picture you want to paint. You come out, you come out whenever this is over and you have, like you say, your canvas, you have a Monet or you have nothing. I think it's funny, some of your Instagram lives and your posts where you said so many of these artists will hit you up like, hey, listen to my music or I'm really good. Now you're giving folks an opportunity. Let's hear what you're working on. If you're talking about it, show us. I looked at my followers yesterday. Maybe 60% are young guys from the age of 25 to 34. I'm the next this. I'm the next that. And I can make you a million dollars. First and foremost, don't ever do it for the dollar. The minute you start doing things for the dollar, then you've lost. The minute you find something that you love, you'll never work a day in your life. So here you go, brotherly love. We like to ask our guests, what does love and grit mean to you? Well, love and grit. Grit is definitely that really unwavering grind to me, right? Love is just really the universe that I, which I live in. I live in a love universe. I won't allow nothing to even permeate that. You can't come through that. That's where I'm protected. I'm protected in my love universe. So that's what it means to me. Thanks so much for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for being you, Charlie. Thank you for being our big brother. I appreciate you. Yeah, hey, it listen, means a listen. lot. Listen, I'm here. Your big brother's here. Whatever, however, whatever I can do, I'm humbly, humbly at your service. Humbly at your service. Up next, it's time for some good news. Thank God for Anya Lachelle from NBC 10's Philly Live because she's got some. Hey, Anya. Hey, guys. Good Welcome to be back. back with you all. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. You were covering something this week that I didn't think much about during this current time, pets. I know, I know. It's so unfortunate because everyone's talking because obviously a lot of people are struggling right now with lost jobs and you know losing family members to the virus, but a lot of people haven't thought about taking care of a pet or even fostering a pet. There's a lot of homeless pets in our region. And so I think it's great that PSPCA and other animal shelters and organizations are trying to encourage people to foster pets during this time. Even NBC, we teamed up with The Greater Good and kicked off a new initiative called Stay Home and Foster. My son would actually love that. Do any of you guys have pets? I had a cat Oreo for 16 years. She was adorable. I called her my sister. But (laughs) There was another story that uh, you're talking about this week that might not be necessarily good news, but great information. We forget about those people who are addicts, former addicts who are going through what they're going through at home. And you did an interesting story about that. Yeah, I spoke with um, one of the directors at Karen Treatment Centers, which they have locations all across the country, but, you know, one of their locations is here in Philly. And just to talk about people who are recovering while quarantined right now, they're faced with so many temptations, even more than if, you know, the city wasn't shut down. But one of the key things that I learned from doing this piece was that connection is something that's really important, especially for anyone in recovery. And since they can't physically connect in person in those small group therapy sessions, they can now do that virtually with, you know, Zoom meetings or Skype meetings. And so I even interviewed one of the alumna from the program who is now 12 years sober, Sherry. She's a sweet, amazing woman. She started a virtual group with 12 close of her friends who are all going through the same thing to keep each other motivated. And yeah, definitely maintaining connection is key so that you don't feel alone and that you don't feel like you're going through it alone because you're not. There's millions of people who are going through the same exact thing. I think that's probably one of the biggest things that's going to come out of this whenever things return back to whatever the new normal will be is people are going to appreciate connecting with people now more than ever. Calling your grandma, calling your mom, calling your sibling. Like I think we've kind of taken that for granted. And this whole pandemic is a wake up call for so many things. I think one of those is remembering to stay in touch and reach back out to people. And we see a lot more people are using social media. I think about my dad, who's now on Facebook. And I'm like, let me find yeah, out, out. On Instagram. I'm like, who helped you do that? Um, but even with it, I know we even see a lot more um, challenges that are popping up. We, I saw on your Instagram account, you had the um, Don't Rush Challenge. It was so yeah. fun and so cool with all of your bridesmaids. All right, so first let me tell you what the Don't Rush Challenge is for those who might not know. So I don't know who started it or where it came from, but it's 
based off of this song called Don't Rush. Basically, you start the video out and the worst look that you could possibly have, right? Bummy look, hair's not done, makeup, no makeup, pajamas, whatever the case is. <laughs> and then you do a fun transition, whether it's like a snap or something cute. And then all of a sudden you're in this fully glam, you know, supermodel look. Mm -hmm. And so uh, me and my bridesmaids did a bridal party addition to that. It's on my Instagram page. But that took... So long. I wrote a script. Me and uh, one of my bridesmaids wrote a script. Only a TV <laughs> person would write a script. I was just about to say she for a TikTok. Get it right. <laughs> okay, Bridezilla. Out there. I <laughs> no, no, I'm it. not that bad. I promise. <laughs> it just it took a lot of takes because it's hard to you know you have to look in the camera and you want to pose right and then you know you're over analyzing every single video. When are you getting married, Anya? Well, my oh, date no. was May 31st. Oh. This year. <sighs> so right. Right now I'm, I'm in limbo right now. I have a new date on hold, but there's so many brides who haven't had the luxury, you know, they have their vendors charging them double to change the date. And luckily I have not run into that issue with any of my vendors. Thank God. I'm so blessed for that. But I feel so bad for the brides who are going That's through right. that. I don't think it's right. Not yeah. at all. And there are the new Zoom weddings too. So you know you can go online and get your certificate. <laughs> oh, I'm a reverend. I can marry you. Justin, what don't you do? <laughs> I, know, I Justin, don't lose do weight, Rachel. That's what I <laughs> I can't do. I'm in the same boat. I'm gaining weight right now. I'm seeing some mm -hmm. um, videos for yoga that you can also have your child participate and that's bonding moment and mom's no excuse, getting people. together moment. Staying at home is no excuse. That's true. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you for having me. me. I love chatting with you guys. Oh, love wait. Grit, my favorite podcast. <laughs> Don't say it unless you mean it. <laughs> oh, you know I mean it, girl. You know I mean it. <laughs> So as you know, and as Love & Grit continues to bring you these stories, so many groundbreaking things and events are created in Philadelphia. Mayori Holmes has added to this legacy by bringing the city its only Black film festival, focusing on films about and by Black and Brown and Indigenous people from around the world. She also happens to be the new curator at the prestigious University of Penn Annenberg Center. Excuse so. us. <laughs> oh, and by the way, before she even says anything, get your pen and paper. As per usual, we go to the professionals, the experts. Who else is better to ask what we should have on our radar to watch? That's what I want to uh, know. What do I need to be watching? I can't <laughs> find anything, Mayor. Really, Justin, there's, there's a lot. Um, I think it kind of depends on your taste. I'm someone who has felt like I needed escape lately, so I'm not watching Tiger King with everyone else. It's a little too intense for me. I've been watching a lot of family dramas, but also love stories. So I just finished High Fidelity on Hulu. Let's start with High Fidelity really quick, because I think a lot of yeah. people don't know that this is a Zoe Kravitz project. Break it down, what you think. Yeah, it's Zoe Kravitz. And also the musical direction is by Amir Thompson, which is wow. really cool. And I think it's eight episodes. I just went through all of them last week. And if you saw the film in 2000, if you're old like I am, then I it's, loved it's, it. not, <laughs> it's not the same as the film, but it's really interesting. And, you know, for those of you who saw it, you know that Zoe's mother, Lisa Bonet, played a love interest in the film. And so Zoe Kravitz is now playing the lead. So she's the role of Rob, the same role that John Cusack had. And it's really interesting. It's like a love letter to Brooklyn for Sex in the City fans. It's got that kind of New York as a character in the way that it was in Sex in the City, but it's from this like millennial, we don't care how we look, we're dirty, you know, that sort of thing. So it's it is cool. one of those shows that you can have your Shazam with, right? And just like find all this classic music. I don't know how they got the licenses. There's so much music that they play and reference. I don't know what the budget for the music clearing was, but it's got to be a lot. Feel Good is another one on Netflix that I've been watching. There's a comedian, Mae Whitman, and it's sort of semi-autobiographical. And it's about her as a recovering addict comedian from Canada who lives in England and pursuing a new love affair. Also, Better Things, if you haven't been watching yes, yes. that show. Where is it? Better Things is now on Hulu. It's an FX show. FX really, they really know what they're doing. And um, just like Atlanta, just like You're the Worst, they really got it going on. And then I'm watching Little Fires Everywhere, which is on Hulu. Carrie Washington stars, Reese Witherspoon oh. stars, the kind of perfect blonde who's sort of trying to keep everything white picket fence. And of course, there's something lurking beneath and she's really, she's in her bag. Based on a novel by Celeste Ng, which I'm now listening to the novel because I love the show so much. And so I want to hear it. Really? Of, it's really good. It's set in the 90s, like in 97. So it's like right in my high school moment. And every actor on there, I mean, they've got Anika Noni Rose, Nicole Bahari, Rosemary DeWitt, like everyone you've loved is in the show. 
Mayori, how do you find what to put on your radar? Who do you trust? Do you, does somebody else say, hey, how do you know what to watch? Mm -hmm. There's a couple of things. I'm friends with the writer Jason Reynolds and we kind of have an ongoing text thing where we just sort of check in about TV shows and the same thing with Lauren Holland. She's out in LA and so she's somebody that we're always kind of checking in about what to watch. My mother who reads The New Yorker every week is someone who kind of keeps me abreast of like, I love that you get ideas from your mom and you're the oh expert. My no, my mom though, yo, my mom used to be a theater critic. So she is like someone who got me into the arts to start with. She's super critical. <laughs> she needs her own podcast. Our favorite thing to do is recast. If we don't like the cast of a show, we recast Ooh. it just for fun. Do you guys have plans for the Black Star Film Festival this year? What, what's going on? So we're planning as if the festival is happening. As you know, the Roots Picnic got moved to August 1st, which is the weekend of our festival. So we're like, if Live Nation is taking that gamble, we're assuming that we should be fine and it'll just be the biggest blowout weekend of life in Philadelphia. Wow. But we're waiting too. We're not making an announcement until May. We want to really see because, you know, the predictions sure. have been that this is going to peak here in mid-May. So we just want to wait and see uh, what makes sense, you know, whether or not we keep it, if we move it a couple weeks forward or if we cancel totally. So we're not sure is the official answer. In my fantasy mind, One Weekend, Black Star, and The Roots Picnic, it would be like Howard Homecoming, right? Yes! <laughs> Hotels, yeah. get ready. It would be a celebration of, you know, almost like a family reunion and folks reconnecting. But even if it's not, there's ways we could figure that out. You know, folks are finding new ways to distance, but still stay connected. So I'm sure all of these great minds, we could come together to come up with something amazing. Yeah. Is there anything else that you're working on that we need to make people aware of? So what folks don't know is with Black Star, our roles are kind of like three quarter time. We don't quite have the funding for full time. So everybody on staff has additional jobs that are mostly related to the work or they're working on their art. And so what I'm doing with my other time is I've just been appointed as media maker in residence at the Annenberg School for Communication. And it's sort of a slash position. I'm also a curator of film at the Annenberg Center for the Performing Arts. So I'm excited about that. We're thinking about programming for fall 2020 and spring 2021. And similarly to Black Star, it's like we're sort of moving forward as if it's happening, but we really don't know how this is going to play out. But I'm excited about it. It's like a dream. I've always wanted an academic appointment in this way. And, you know, having one that is also a curator is really exciting. And then Black Star has become bigger. So the reason we have staff now is that in addition to the festival, we're launching a magazine. And in the future, we'll have a filmmaker lab for Philadelphia filmmakers. Oh, that's awesome. And Thank you. Yeah. And then we're also launching a filmmaker seminar and then thinking about year round programming. So there will be some programming coming up. We had to cancel everything we had scheduled for the spring, of course, and then thinking about how we might do some virtual activity. Mayori, like me, is an adopted sister of Philadelphia. Like she's not born and raised there. She moved there as an adult, just like I did. But however, what you have done for this city, what you have brought to this city and what you continue to do makes me so proud. Most people don't know that like Black Star started as an idea of Black Lily Film Festival, which is derived from like the roots and how we're all just connected in so many ways and how you've taken that and evolved in such a beautiful entity. And I just wanted to share that with everybody that you work hard for this city. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so let's keep it funky. And I believe Rachel has already brought this up a couple times. There has been a little bit more day drinking included in our days than usual. <laughs> day, night, what's it matter? Exactly. But my question for everybody is, are you being as creative with your choices as you are with your new food recipes? Hmm. Ooh, something to think about. Just saying, that's why we have Andre Darlington here. He's written some pretty dope books about cocktails and he's even got one where he pairs them with movies and he's a Napa Valley Venture. I don't even know if I'm saying this word right, y'all. Venture, I'm asking. ask him. Let's ask him. Let's ask him. <laughs> Yeah, Andre knows his drinks. That was my point. Hey, Andre. What are you drinking? I'm having a breakfast martini, which you can have any time of day. Breakfast oh. martini? Start from breakfast. the beginning. Wait breakfast a minute. martini. The most important meal of the day is breakfast, so let's talk about this. So actually, cocktails, originally when they came about in the turn of the 17th, 18th century, were consumed at breakfast. But what I want to show you today is a breakfast martini made by an Italian bartender named Salvatore Calabresi. And his his great ingenuity was to make a martini out of common things that you have in your fridge at home. So this is the perfect 
quarantini. Maia's got this. her notebook out. I've never <laughs> seen her take notes before, yes. ever. So the secret to the breakfast martini is I'm going to use orange marmalade, but you can use any jelly or jam that you have in your fridge. So if you've got some strawberry jam sitting back there, that's fine too. Orange just makes a really good flavor. It's actually technically not a martini because it has lemon juice in it, and that's to counteract the sweetness you're doing in the jam. So the drink is really easy. One and a half or two ounces of gin. I'm going to use Blue Coat from here in Philadelphia. Three quarters of an ounce of any kind of triple sec. I'm using Cointreau here. It has a great flavor. And then three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. And then you take that with just a spoon, like a teaspoon, or here I've got a bar spoon and you throw this all in a shaker and you shake it up with some ice. Gonna give this a good shake. And there we have our breakfast martini. That is beautiful. And it's delicious. Vodka is absolutely fair game to use in this. So again, just vodka, a triple sec or something else that's sweet, and then a little bit of lemon juice, and then just a little bit of that marmalade in there and shake it up. The reason we're shaking the drink for people who are new getting into cocktails is that you stir spiritus drinks. So technically martinis, Manhattans, drinks like that are stirred. I'm shaking this one because it has lemon juice in it. And you shake cocktails when there's juice, cream, or eggs. That is why we're shaking this drink. And again, you know, you don't need fancy equipment. You can just use a mason jar or something easy. And if you're stirring, you can use a chopstick. I've done it before. It'll, it'll stir that drink just as well as a bar spoon. I've used a finger. <laughs> I was about to there say, you go. tip of a the day, works. the more you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the easiest, best drinks that you can have any time of day that uses a staple from your fridge. Andre, how do you decide when it's time for a cocktail versus wine because you won the Napa Valley... You're a bit. Please help her out. <laughs> Vintner. <laughs> Vintner. It was the Napa Valley Vintners Association. So I was a wine writer before I became a cocktail writer and had a cocktail column. Uh, and the question is, you know, wh when is wine appropriate? When is a cocktail appropriate? It used to be thought that cocktails were sort of a palate killer and you didn't want to have a cocktail if you were having, you know, nice food, whatever that means. That has really changed. I feel like the tradition is typically you start the meal or start cooking with a cocktail, I would say, and then switch over to wine with food. But you can also have a cocktail with food. I mean, a Manhattan or an old fashioned with a burger or a steak is just fantastic. And the thing about cocktails that you can remember if you're a wine person is that wine and cocktails are very similar in that if the food goes with, let's say Chardonnay and chicken, right? You're drinking a white wine. Also just choose a white cocktail. Whiskey and chicken don't go as well together as vodka and chicken do. So it's pretty easy. If it's in the white wine column, drink a white cocktail. If it's in the red wine column, drink something more spiritous, rum, whiskey, that kind of thing, and it will always work. What do you got, a rosé there? Rosé, it's the ultimate in-between. You can really go any direction. We all need a little relief from this, and this is a good way to do it. And it's a nice way to like treat yourself, you know? But you know, the nice thing about cocktails is that they're not meant to guzzle, although, you know, you can do that too on a bad day. Everything in moderation, even moderation, right? True. Thank you. <laughs> but you know, cocktails are a great way. I, I think of them as like a culinary experience. It sounds ridiculous, but I keep a couple of cocktail glasses in the freezer so they're always cold. I don't keep a lot of booze in the freezer. You know, if you've got a bottle of vodka, keep in the freezer. That's a great, nice way to have it. But really the glassware in the freezer, move the bag of peas aside, put a couple glasses in there, and then when you do want to treat yourself, make yourself a little drink. And, you know, none of us can go out right now, and it'll give you that experience of going out to a bar or restaurant. And it is a way to treat yourself. Every day, day at 4.30. <laughs> All right. Which Andre Darlington book do you recommend for your stay at home? Well, the first one that came out was called The New Cocktail Hour. And it really is kind of an essential cocktail Bible. And that will really take you into a deep dive into cocktails. The newest book is called Booze and Vinyl. And that pairs 70 of the greatest listening albums with an A-side and B-side cocktail. I don't want to say it's more fun because the other book is really fun. It's meant that you're supposed to listen to a vinyl album all the way through and have cocktails with it. But, you know, in this time, if people vinyl. don't have vinyl, I put all of the music from that book up on Spotify. 
so people can have the same experience if they want to, because I didn't want vinyl to be a hurdle for people right now. How do we find it? Booze and Vinyl is at uh, actually boozeandvinyl.com. And from there, uh, you'll be able to find all the other books. That is so creative. I love that. What's your top three albums to drink with and what? Oh, good question. Especially right now, it changes all the time. I really like Frank Sinatra's In the Wee Hour of the Night. That is paired with Manhattan and I believe a tuxedo is side B. It's just a really nice crooner album to chill out. I feel like a dance party album is fun, but right now a nice relaxing album is great. I also like, uh, you know, Aretha Franklin is a fantastic album. That's paired with a couple lighter drinks. I would say also as a party, maybe a party danceable album, something like Prince probably is going to get everybody through. And we have Purple Rain in the book. And actually, there's a Prince Coronation cocktail and a a, a Purple Rain cocktail for that. But it's a really fun way to make pretty simple drinks, set aside some time in the evening, make two cocktails, listen to an album, chill out. You said Frank Sinatra paired with a tuxedo? Yeah, so there was a tuxedo club in upstate New York. And uh, the tuxedo is essentially like a martini, except it has sherry in it. It sort of replaces the vermouth with sherry. It's a really wonderful cocktail. Ooh. And the story actually is, is that the tuxedo, the word for tuxedo that we know, is from this club around the turn of the century. And I guess people that were going to the club decided to cut off their tails and go out because they were rabble rousers. And Ooh. that's where the word tuxedo comes from. So it's a fun like American heritage cocktail. You know, I feel like at this time when we're all quarantined, it's tough to get a lot of complicated ingredients. Mm -hmm. Um, And booze and vinyl has a lot of simple ingredients. I recommend that people stick to like old fashions are really easy to make right now. It's just a little bit of sugar and, you know, either whiskey or rum, or you can even use tequila in an old fashioned gin rickies, which are gin highballs, just the simple stuff, three ingredient cocktails, classic cocktails are gonna get us through this. <laughs> Andre, you know what would help me get through this and make my day? <laughs> Gigantic <It>. wine delivery? <laughs> <laughs> well, duh, some things go unsaid. <laughs> but if Justin were to start wearing a tuxedo, Oh, <laughs> when he hosts the show. If you oh, drink a tuxedo, I'll wear one. Oh, challenge <laughs> accepted. I don't have one. But and I can't we, leave. We need to have a Zoom meeting where we all dress up in our finest <gasps> and have a cocktail hour. I would love that. <laughs> Please. Thanks for coming, Andre. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, you guys. It's fantastic. Hey, hurry up and get them off before I ask them about the lunch drink and the dinner drink. Because <laughs> bye. <laughs> bye, sir. Cheers to you. Thanks so much. Oh Who wants God. a drink that now? Like the most perfect way to end this show. That was lovely. I love Andre. And you know what? We need an escape during these really tough times. <laughs> Thank you to Andre. Thank you to Mayori. Thank you to Anya. Charlie. And of course, Charlie Mack. And we're here for you guys. No need to be sad or get cabin fever because Love and Grit is here to give you everything that you need, all kinds of relief. That's right. And we're in it together and we support one another. We care about each other and there's going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. We know that because we've proven that time and time again. You know, Love and Grit is in our DNA. We'll see you next time. Mm